We are back here on the New York Red Bulls Radio Network, the second segment of our Players Only podcast, kicking it. And we are uh, welcoming in for the first time here Josh Sims, who is good enough to give us some time. It's been about a month since you made the move, now on loan from Southampton for the rest of the season. First of all, really appreciate you coming in. Um, I'd have to start with, have you had an opportunity in the last month to kind of feel like you're in one place, you've been able to take a breath a little bit, and, and probably now feeling a little bit more at home than the first couple of weeks? Probably today. <laughs> probably today is the, the day where I feel like uh, I've sort of settled in now. Um, there's been a few guys that have gone into international, um, so the numbers are a bit down um, from the normal normal amount, but I mean, I'm moving into my new place uh, today, so there's that's sort of going on uh, off the pitch. So no, I mean, finally it's sort of uh, starting to sort of set in yeah you know for you probably so many pieces and components to making the move to a new league Mm. in a different country and at the back end of the season so you come in in august and i'm and i'm not telling you anything that you don't know knowing that you'd probably have have limited games but you just mentioned moving into a new place there's so much off-field stuff that goes into a transfer or a loan which keeps you as busy as sometimes the on-field stuff does. Yeah, for sure. I mean, <clears throat> it's uh, it's not just uh, on the pitch that you need to focus on. I mean, that is the, the main priority for me when I come out here is obviously to perf- uh, perform and do well for the club, but it's off the pitch as well, all the experiences and all the learning, the, the way of life in America. So um, it's a lot different here than it is in Europe. Um, and also my girlfriend, she's come over, so it's a big thing for her. Um, for my family, um, obviously I wouldn't be around for them to come to the game, so it's a bit different um, with the time time difference and stuff like that. But it's all part of the experience, um, and no, I mean everyone's been really sort of encouraged me to come out here, and um, they they want me the best for me. So yeah, it's all good at the moment. How had you ever been to the states? No, uh, never. Well, no, I've been to Baltimore. Um, that was just for preseason uh, with with Southampton. That was I think in 2017. Okay, um, but we checked out like the Under Armour thing they got there and yep. stuff like that so that was good but never never on holiday so this is like the first first time i've had a little chance um we had a few days off to check out the city and things like that um but like it's been very rushed <laughs> since i've been out here so i've not had a really really good time to check everything out but yeah so this is the first time really so in the span of just about a month give or take you know a day here or there what mm. have you learned about living not just in the united states but living in kind of the hub in a way of the united yeah. states in this in this new york city metro area i mean it's uh compared to where i live back in uh, southampton in england it's a uh, very hustle bustle um especially in, in the city um, i'm not really used to that it's uh, a lot quieter where i live more the countryside so i mean learning that sort of side of life and it's a lot faster pace um here but no i've, I've really enjoyed it uh, for my girlfriend as well she's obviously when I'm here training, she's finding things to do, um, going checking out places while while I'm here training. Um, but no, she's she's also enjoyed it, and I think that's the main thing, because um, it's a big thing for for me to come out here, but also, if not a bigger thing for her to come out, um, because obviously I'm here for the football, where she she ne- like needs to learn a whole new way of life, find new friends and things like that. Um, so that's that's a big thing as well. How about for for that? Yeah. Um, since you since you've brought your girlfriend up a couple of times. To, to have somebody, as you make this transition, even for the rest of the year, to have somebody here that you can rely on in a way, not that there's not people with the team, but somebody who's personally connected to you that can kind of go through this journey together probably makes it a little bit easier than just saying, okay, I'm going to the States, I'm going to be there for mm-hmm. the rest of the year, and then what happens after that, yeah. who knows. Um, but having somebody that has that personal connection with you probably pretty important. Yeah, I mean, because for me, it's not too bad because we have all the guys here, the st- all the staff, the players. So I'm looked after. Um, so I'm not the problem. <laughs> it's uh, it's for her. She needs to find uh, people that she feels comfortable with. And uh, she's already felt comf- a good connection with the other players, girlfriends and wives. So that's important. Um, like they say, happy wife, happy life. Unless she's not wife yet. But <laughs> but it's true. I mean, she uh, as long as she's happy, I'm happy. You know, we just had... Um Tim Parker on mm. and I and I asked him about bringing you into the locker room um, and since I've been with the team I made this point to him saying it's not just about how you are as a player it's also how you are as a person with the Red Bull culture and bringing the right guy into the locker room what what did you Josh Sims know about the New York Red Bulls before you found out you either could be and then ultimately wound up coming here on loan yeah 
Well, I think the big part of it was the Red Bull group. Um, the manager at Southampton was part of that. So the training sessions I've, I've experienced here are very similar back to what it was like in England. Um, the style of play, uh, the way the boys play is very similar to home. So it wasn't a massive uh, change for me to come out here. And I knew that when I before I came out. I watched some of the, the matches um, and I seen some of the training sessions. So I knew that it wasn't a, a massive step uh, or change for me. So that was a big part of it. I wouldn't want to have come all this way to play a style of football that wasn't right for me because that wouldn't have benefited me or the team that I was going to play for. So that was a big thing. Um, and also for Southampton, they were they were keen for me to play here because they knew the sort of the philosophy here. And um, so, yeah, I mean, it all sort of combined together to, to create a place that I think would be uh, suited for me um, and benefit me and uh, Red Bulls. Josh Sims joining us here on the New York Red Bulls radio network. Um, he is with the Red Bulls on loan through the remaining part of this season. You came up through the Southampton Academy. Right. Um, and I'll say this, having you played in the Premier League, the idea of being on loan isn't something that's unfamiliar with you because you spent some time with Reading. Right. Does that make the loan here to New York a little bit easier, even though it's in a completely different area? Like, you kind of know the how it works in a way. Yeah, I mean, obviously, loans uh, vary depending on where you go. Um, Reading was... Is, I'm not sure if you know geographically, but it's very close to Southampton, so it's it's just down the road. Um, my family could have come to the games, no problem, etc. So that was easier in terms of that, um, being closer to home. But here, the difficult thing was getting the visa and things like that. It took a bit of time. So I was playing, well, I wasn't playing for a couple of weeks in training because I wasn't allowed to train um, whilst I was getting the visa, etc. So that was difficult. So I've sort of come here off the back of pre-season. Um, not really played many minutes uh, back at Southampton, so I've sort of come here, tried to do a bit of training in, in the time that I had, um, so I didn't come here completely unfit. So I've tried to do that, um, but I can see that the the pace that the boys are at there, I obviously f full on into their season. Um, so that's what I need to step up to um, and just sort of get up to speed as quickly as I can. Are you still paying attention to things in England, the Premier League? Are you still watching the games? Yeah, I'm still trying to, but I need to learn the, the time difference in when the games are on. So Southampton played Manchester United the other day. Big big tie. Yeah, it was, it was a great result for them. But I woke up, I don't know what time. And the game was over? I, yeah, well, <laughs> nearly it was. It was about the 70th minute. I woke up, oh, let me check the score or let me see what time it's on. And it was already 70th minute. So I need to learn the timings. But no, I, I tried to. And obviously the, it's, the Premier League is so big. It, it's no problem finding it um, out here. So yeah, all the bit, all the games are on. So having played in the Premier League for the years that you did, or even the Championship when you were with mm. Reading on loan, um, what does the the young kid growing up, now 22, know about Major League Soccer as a whole in terms of the league and yeah. how it's looked on in Europe and and all kinds of things like that? I mean, growing up, um, I didn't really know anything about it. You obviously you know that the league's there etc but it's uh it was never really played um when i was growing up but coming especially i would say the last couple years you see it on we have sky sports news it's it's played on there the highlights are played on there um obviously where the time difference is you don't really get to see the games unless you're up that late um so that's the only thing i'd say that is difficult about it is that the games are just on it's such a, a bad time in england that it's difficult to watch them but like I said, the highlights, etc., and they're all over Sky Sports News now. So it's not like it's completely unattached um, from Europe at all. Um, I think, and being here personally, I can say that it's it's good standard. It really is. It's a good standard. It's not like it's a we say in England like a Mickey Mouse league where it's just like a nothing. Uh, it's it's not. It's, there's some really good players here, and I think that's a big thing. I think players need to come out here to experience how good it is, um, to see sort of firsthand. It's, it's not it's not a bad league at all um, and it's definitely gonna be beneficial for me does it does it help you in a way <laughs> to see guys from England come here obviously here with New York Bradley yeah. Wright Phillips case in point yeah. Wayne Rooney going to DC United does it help you see other guys who have <coughs> played in places that you've played and then make a transition here to Major League Soccer you're kind of doing it reverse yeah. you're at the beginning of your career mm -hmm. there they were more towards kind of the end of their career yeah. still playing obviously but yeah. um moving forward this could be a nice stepping stone for you yeah i think in england there's been a sort of 
a thing where young players never really got out of England. It was always like you'd play in the English leagues, you'd drop down to maybe the League Twos, the League Ones to get time. I think in the last couple of years, it's been a big sort of step, I think, for young players to move out of England, experience sort of the new uh, new way of life, um, ex- experience different cultures. I think it's a big thing, not just for a footballer or soccer players, is for yourself, um, big sort of life experience. And like I said, seeing the the English players that have come out here, it's not it's not um, a thing that English players wouldn't do. I've seen, like you say, Rooney's been out here, Brad here. So it's um, it was never a hard thing for me to choose to come out here. Like I said, I'm doing it in the reverse where I'm coming up um, for the age groups. So I'm still young. And so I think for me, it's a big step for young players to come out here. I think more and more should look to do it if they can. Um, I know that there was a few at Southampton young players that didn't get the pro contracts and would get sort of the college football um, out here and sort of do it that way. Um, but yeah, it's, it's a big step for me and I'm looking forward to how it goes. You know, you just made a, uh, an interesting comparison there that I picked up. You said football and then right away said soccer. <laughs> right I after. know, I'm trying to learn the... How <laughs> difficult is that? Because listen, <laughs> yeah. there, there, there's, there's not just American guys here in Major League Soccer on the Red Bulls. Mm. There's guys like... Danny Royer, who comes from Europe, yeah. Mark Shotkowski, guys from Central South America, they call it football as well. Yeah. When you w- you know obviously what soccer is because yeah. it's still a term that's referred to. Is that something that's difficult for you to even yeah. make that simple yeah. transition? Yeah, it's just purely because I've never called it soccer, but I'm trying to because you guys call it soccer, so I'm I'm trying to call it soccer because that's what you guys call it. Um, and I know that the foot the NFL is starting soon. I think is it tonight? I think tonight. Yeah. So. Uh, I can't really call it football. <laughs> but what do you what do you know about any other I'll say American kind of sport? Yeah. Baseball, start of the football season. Like you're you're coming here and the the baseball season's kind of winding down. The World Series will be coming up in another, you know, 6 weeks or something like that. Yeah. You just mentioned the NFL getting up up and going. Is that something that from a cultural personal standpoint you're you're almost kind of looking forward to experience a little bit? Yeah, I mean like I said earlier, the experience is, is is learning all these new sports. In England, we never get the chance. It's, I mean, football's so big out there that it's you don't really watch anything else or play anything else, especially for when you're playing professionally. You don't get the chance to. So, yeah, I mean, I'm looking forward to learning. I have no idea about the rules and et cetera of it, so I need to, to learn them. The boys are trying to get me into it. Um, so, yeah, I'm looking forward to I'll probably go to a, a game or two um, just to see it firsthand and see it live. Um, but yeah, I mean, there's so many big sports out here. You got the baseball, the hockey. Um, it's just it's a new thing. You just don't get that in England. When you've seen um, leagues like the NFL mm. or baseball try and go to England, like the Yankees and yeah, Red Sox yeah. played there this year, the NFL usually plays there a couple of times of the year. How's that viewed by people in your country? I think it's more. I mean, I probably speak for the majority that. They don't really understand the rules. I mean, obviously, a lot of them can watch it and do know the rules, but I think it's more of a, a an experience. Um, we don't have any of that sort of rugby's the only similarity, kind of. Um, but this is not that kind of sport there. So I think a lot of people go there just to experience it um, because it is just so different to what we have. Um, so I mean, it is big. Like there is people that watch it um, and follow it, but it's it's hard to. Um, so I think yeah, it's viewed in a way that it's it's more of a, an experience. Um, to watch it rather than watching it because they're, they're following one of the teams. Speaking of baseball, your first game at one of the most iconic places um, sports-wise, yeah. Yankee Stadium. It's in the middle of a, of a derby match, and I made a joke with, with Tim before when he was in here. As you're walking around, are you thinking to yourself, wow, I'm at Yankee Stadium. This, mm. is, this is where the New York Yankees play. Or what the heck is a soccer field doing – in the middle of the stadium, and I'm about to make my major league soccer yeah. debut right here. Both, both. <laughs> yeah. No, it's um, like I said, it's such an iconic stadium. Even for an English person, you know that the Yankee Stadium is such a, a massive, massive stadium, um, and it is a brilliant stadium. It's just a shame that they had to you know, cut it in half for, to fit the pitch on it. But it's um, yeah, it wasn't ideal. Um, but for an English person coming out, it was a uh, yeah, I enjoyed it. I mean, I enjoyed being there and. And seeing the stadium, uh, it's a bit different on the pitch with the, with how they done it and obviously the result in the end. But I mean, that was a it's a good experience for me. It's a good learning curve. <laughs> so you've had that game, 
the game last time out against Colorado at home. Um, the next time after the international break, you'll be in a completely different place and area. I'm yeah. sure a couple of the guys have talked to you being Portland, Seattle, that part of the country is almost nothing like where you are right now. Are you looking forward to even in limited time to going and experiencing and seeing different places? Yeah, I mean, for two different reasons. I think the international break now is a good chance for me to, as I mentioned earlier, the fitness is is to get more sort of time and training to sort of get my, improve my fitness and being ready for the game. I think the Colorado game, um, obviously I have still haven't been here that long. So it was, uh, it was hard for me to get up to pace of the game. I, I tried to do my best, um, but it was difficult. Um, but yeah, I mean, so I'll have time before the next game to uh, to improve that. But yeah, off the pitch, obviously experience a whole new experience, a whole new part of the country. Don't really know what to expect, <laughs> to be honest. But no, I'm looking forward to it. When you when you land here and you start talking to the guys, and I'm sure you knew it when you were coming in, and somebody says we want to make sure that we get into the playoffs. Yeah, is that something that is so kind of in a way unfamiliar to you because it's 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 an American thing more yeah. so than it is anywhere else are you like what do you mean we got to get in the playoffs it's not just who finishes at the top of the table wins I mean, the league yeah i mean in the in the championship we do have the playoffs to get into the the premier league so it's not completely unfamiliar but i think with the way that the the league works in terms of that no one can really get relegated that's that's a new concept for me um i mean it's not hard to get your head around it i mean i've been here for however long i have now and i i know how the league works so no i mean i think when I first came here, it was a bit like trying to learn how it worked. But no, I think also for me is the distances. Like I say, we're in Seattle and Portland next. I think in England, you just wouldn't ever get that distance between games. Um, I think we'd probably stay out there, if I'm correct, mm -hmm. um, and train out there. So that's that's a new thing as well, um, doing that. If you have an away game in England, I think the, the furthest you could probably travel is probably five hours, um, and that would be by car or coach. But on a plane, it'd be like an hour. And that would be from top to bottom. That would be like Southampton to Newcastle. So it's really not far at all between the games. Um, so that's a, that's a big thing. When you look at um, the opportunities that you've had, and still a 22, so much in front of you, to play in the <laughs> Premier League, play on loan in the championship. Um, what I want to ask you about now, though, is, is what it's been like to have the opportunity to put your national team jersey on and play with the um, – the, the youth teams of England, what, what th I mean, that must be just a dream experience for a kid who grows up yeah. in England to be part of the national program. Yeah, sure. I mean, I remember even now, the first time I put it on, I got called up. So I was put onto a, like a standby list. So, uh, well, this is when I first got called up. This is under 17s. Um, I was playing really well at Southampton through, through the youth. Um, so yeah, I got called up to the standby and I was over the moon. I remember calling my mum, dad and agents, you know, everyone, all my family saying, look, I've been on standby and they're like, that's really good. And then I think the team, uh, it was, t I think it was traveling to Portugal and it was a day before I was meant to travel out and I got the call to say one of the boys got injured. So I'm going to be put into the team, put into the squad. And yeah, I was just absolutely over the moon. I was very nervous cause I didn't know many of the guys there cause there was no one there from Southampton. So I had to meet a bunch of new guys. Um, but yeah, it was just an unbe unbelievable feeling to put that, you know, the England top on and play for your country. Um, and I've done, done really well. And luckily I've been had a chance to, uh, play for the older age groups. Um, most recently with the under twenties. Um, so yeah, I've been really fortunate and honored to play for them. Let's finish with a, with a couple of quick things here, Josh. First, um, tell me, is it difficult for you at all? being here on loan with, with limited time because the regular season is almost over and hopefully yeah. a, a playoff run will follow, maybe not knowing what the, the future will hold for you in a way? Is that difficult at all? Um, not really. I think in what we do, we need to take it step by step. So I was never really, well, for me now, I was never really looking forward, not forward, looking at the future and see what it holds. Um, I think I need to just concentrate game by game and so does the club. I mean, if we get into playoffs, which we should, and hopefully we do, that's brilliant, and we get more game time, and then we can see from there if I, if I stay for the following season. Yeah, see what's best. What have any of the guys on the team yep. told you while you're here that you need to get done? Like, you need to go here to dinner. You need to go <laughs> here and do this. You need to have um, this experience yeah. while you're in the, in the United States. I can't give you one answer because there's been so many 
Whose advice do you feel like you should listen to? Because listen, let's um, be fair. There's plenty of guys I'll, on there. Yeah. You, you don't want to pay any attention <laughs> to them at all. I'll probably be a bit biased and say Brad, just because he's English. Okay. Um, so no, I've, I've hooked up with him um, at the weekend and we went out for you know for a bit. And so I've, I'm trying to stay with him because he's English and he knows what he's talking about. <laughs> Did he take you to like an, a New York City English pub? Yeah, similar. So similar, we haven't yeah. really experienced it yet. I mean, it's uh no. I mean, I've not had a ta- chance. I've not had time to see the whole of the city. But it's even from the guys back in England that have been out here. They've given me endless, endless things to do, and t- there is endless things to do here. So I'm I'm never going to be short of things to do. Put it I, that way. I think the way we, Gordon, how we. T- did this episode with Tim being a native New York guy. You need to spend a couple of days with Tim. Maybe yeah. drive the LIE, really I mean, experience the yeah. traffic and figure out oh, all, I don't all wanna, the hustle I don't, and bustle. I, yeah, I don't, I'm not sure about the traffic. I might leave that, but it's uh, yeah, there's so many things to do. I'm definitely not going to get bored. <laughs> well, I really appreciate you coming by. I, I know it's busy for you with everything, kind of getting yourself uh, yeah. put together here in the States, giving us some time, having an opportunity to, to chat with you and get to know you a little bit. And now the fans can, can listen back and do that as well. Um, wish you nothing but success for the Thank remaining you. part of your time here with New York and, and whatever the future may hold. I appreciate it. That's Josh Sims who swings by, gives us some time here. This is our players only podcast. We thank Tim Parker, our producer, Gordon Stevenson, the rest of us here, the New York Red Bulls radio network. I'm Matt Harmon. We will see you next weekend in Seattle with that, uh, two game Western road trip, Seattle and Portland, two big games coming up for the New York Red Bulls. Thanks as always for listening to us here.